G'day Trench Hatters, Greg here from Fishfake Films and welcome back to the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision. Well, you may wonder why we've uh, stopped this train here at this turnout in a rather untypical place. Well, it's because it's just about ready to head off onto the Tarragini Cutoff. And the Tarragini Cutoff is actually a reversing section because it goes from the eastbound track and joins up to the westbound track at the other end, which is going the opposite way. So therefore, we have to use an auto reverser. Uh, I use ditch tracks, AR1s. Uh, they're sort of old school, I suppose, now, because they still have a relay on them, and newer ones are all solid state, which I haven't tried yet. But anyway, I had problems with one of mine a couple of weeks ago, so I replaced it. It's about 10 years old. It was on the temporary layout. And the, prob the problem persisted. So um, I had to check into a few things and do a few wiring adjustments. So today we're going to talk about hooking up auto reverses and um, getting the most performance or the best performance out of them, which seems a bit weird. But how you wire them and where you put feeders and that does make a bit of a difference. So what we're going to do we're going to head off into the classroom, so make sure you go to the toilet and do your shoes up before we go. And we'll discuss auto reverses, how they work basically, and the best way to set them up for the best performance so they trip quickly. And uh, I was always worried about having them run off a turn out here like it does at the Tarrag Tarragini Cutoff. And at the other end of the Tarragini Cutoff, that was a problem. So we'll just zip off into the classroom now, and then we'll come back and have a look at the fix. Yes? Hello, is this the auto reverse part? It is. Come in, come in, come in. Sit down, sit down. Have you been to the toilet? Yes, yes. Well, yes. Okay. Well, okay. Get up and go to the toilet halfway through. Very good. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cup Very tea. good. All right. Make yourselves comfortable. Uh. Right, our trend we're here in the class, and today we're going to talk about their AR1 auto reverser. So, first thing, what does an auto reverser do? Well, some of you may think that it changes the polarity of the rails. But, I'll take my model railroad's hat off and I'll put my electrician's hat on and say, well, it doesn't really change the electrical polarity of the rails because remember our DCC system runs on AC, so there is no polarity. It runs from positive to negative at about 50 times a second. So these two rails are always going positive, negative, positive. So changing the polarity is really not necessary. There is no polarity. All your decoders run off AC. They convert that to DC to run the motor and the lights and all that sort of shit. So, what does your AR1 do? Well, technically, what it does is, if you imagine if we follow, let's say we follow this outside rail here, and let's say our AR our auto reverser wasn't in, we follow the black rail around, da 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 we come to here, so what we're effectively doing is getting our black rail, which is our, not really our negative, let's call it neutral, and it's basically just touching over like that onto the red one. So that's basically a short circuit. Whether it's got power on it, AC, DC, whatever. You take it, you know, a line from there, put it to there, it's a short circuit. So regardless of it being AC or DC, it doesn't matter, it's still going to be a short. So what does your auto reverser do? Well, basically what it does is, when you're entering into this section, your auto reverser senses that these two tracks must be the same as these two, not these two at this end. So when your wheel shorts out these two tracks across here, it makes sure that these two are the same as here. Not electrically polarity, but let's say physically. 
So you go around the auto reverser, driving, 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 and you get to here. What it does, it's it when the wheels touch across here, it knows that you've basically got these two lines touching. So then it switches over, disconnects these two cables at this end, basically, and reconnects them at this end. So it's like getting two leads and swapping them over. So it's not worried about polarity. Remember, this is still going positive, negative, positive, negative, or active, neutral, 50 times a second. All it's doing is disconnecting these two wires and reconnecting this end so they actually match up with the routes. That's what your AR1 does technically during service. So there's no real polarity as far as positive and negative is concerned. But anyway, that's being technical. So, so what's the best way to set up your AR1? Okay, well here we have our track bus coming in. That's pretty normal. And then out of your AR1 is to your reversing section. So if you've got a loop like this or any reversing section, whether it be long or short or whatever, like in the Tarragini cutoff, it's a straight line. It's a good idea to run feeders to each end of the reversing section. Because what it needs to do, it needs to be able to pick up this short circuit as quickly as possible and then quickly switch over. So if you only have one feeder going out to the middle here, your voltage might be a little bit lower here and when you come along here and short that out, it's going to take a little bit longer to get back. So you want things to happen really quickly. Now, another thing is a good idea. If your auto reverse section starts near a turnout, which is a lot of the time it does. You can have problems like I did running through your tortoise switch machine. So we'll zoom in on here and we'll show you what we can do about that. Right, now, as I was saying with the auto reverser. Excuse me, sir. Ah, yes, John. Excuse me, sir. I was a bit uh, confused as the train passes into the blue area on the board. It, does it have to be a particular length so that when it reaches the other end, it's not over both ends of the auto reverser? Whose phone is that? <laughs> Thea! I told you to turn your phone off. Hello, please. Jesus. Hello. Right. Ah, very good question, John. Unlike some people who don't turn their phones off, very good question. Yes. When you're designing your layout, you have to make sure that whether it's a reversing loop or like the Tarragini cutoff, whether it's a straight section on your layout that actually goes from one polarity to another, your train length must be shorter than the reversing section. Otherwise, if you have a train going in here and trips this, by the time it gets to the other end, if it starts tripping this end and then starts tripping this end at the same time, you will damage your auto reverser because it takes the whole current of all your boosters through here and through your AR1. So it's really important that your train length, your maximum train length is inside the auto section. Very good job. Thank you for clarifying. Now, the problem I had on the Tarragini cutoff was uh, electro frog points. Remember our frog is powered through our a very bad drawing of our tortoise switch machine. This is our track bus coming in here. Now, at the moment, we see our auto reverser section stopping here and there's another short section of track powered by your normal track bus. So what happens is when your train comes across either way, it has a good power source through here. So the short circuit, because remember it does short the system out, can get through your track bus straight back to your AR1 and this way from here to a close set of feeders back to your AR1. Now what I had before, I didn't have this, I had our auto section coming up to here, like that. Now, what happens then is when the train comes along, da 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 da, shorts this out. Now, this rail's okay because that's a straight rail and that's connected to a feed somewhere. But this rail here has to go through your AR1, through another set of contacts in here, back out again and through here to your track bus. Now, you might think, eh, whoopee-doo. But, in my case, because we're talking about thousands of a second timing, getting through the contact in here, and then back out again and through there was not long enough for it to run properly, and it was shorting, shorting and stalling the locomotives coming across through here. So, remedy that, put another short section of track in here, make sure it's the same same polarity as your turnout. 
Now you still need your insulated fish plate here for your switched frog. And it's a good idea to put another one there as well. Put your line through there. Put a track feed onto there. Another track feed onto there. Obviously the right polarity. And then you don't have to worry about your short going through your tortoise switch machine or whatever you're using. In my case, that saved the problem. So I ended up buying a new AR1 and that wasn't the problem. The problem was in this here. So nine times out of 10 you won't have to do that, but occasionally you may have to. Right, another important thing is your AR1 is connected to your trap bus. Now remember to set your AR1 trip current as low as you possibly can. So as, as we were talking on the layout, run a train around, turn your adjustment pot back anti-clockwise as far as you can until it starts chattering if, and then move it slightly clockwise. You want the minimum amount of trip current as possible so there's less stress on these joints and less stress on the little relay in here. And remember this is old school technology now, the new uh, electronic switching um, solid state ones don't have a relay but even so it's still um, important to keep your trip current set as low as possible. Now, Let's say you have your trip current set at 3 amps on your AR1, which is way too high. Your AR1 goes through a circuit breaker. Now, we should all be using district circuit breakers. If you have your district circuit breaker set at, say, 2 amps, and your AR1 set at 3 amps, then when the train hits here, the trip current will be 3 amps, that will trip your circuit breaker and shut down whatever else is hanging off the circuit breaker, whatever power district is running off that. So, your setting on your circuit breaker needs to be higher than your AR1. So, let's say your circuit breaker for your uh, power districts is set at, say, 3 amps. I'd probably set mine at 2 because, remember, your whole booster is only putting at 5 amps. So, you want your district circuit breakers to trip quicker than anything else. So, your district circuit breaker, say it's set at 2. Make sure your AR1 is set less than that, and you can do that by just adjusting it and seeing if it, um, if it trips. And if you find that your AR1 is tripping your district circuit breaker, well then you know that your trip current in your AR1 is too much trend So you've got to turn that down and make sure that your AR1 doesn't trip your circuit breaker. That's another important thing. So you have all sorts of troubles, you might be thinking there's something else going on, shorting the track out, but it's actually your AR1 tripping your, seat, your circuit breaker up here. Because remember, this is a dead short across here. So if you have your AR1 set at 8 amps, it will draw 8 amps across here before it switches. So trip current as low as possible and below your district, make it underneath your district circuit breaker current rating. Right, okay, tellers. I hope that explains everything for you in the theory. We'll go back to the layout now and look at it in the practical sense and uh, show you what we mean by all this. Right, right, class, that's it. Hope you learned something. Very good, thanks for coming. Thanks very much, sir. Thanks, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. There you go, here, little. Cheeky boy, there, there. One thing, way to go there. Okay, we're back. Aha, we're going to be out of the classroom. Right. This is our main line, our lower main line here, which is going in the eastern direction. And it wraps around the uh, peninsula and goes up Banksy Hill and comes back this way. So it's going this way, that way, and then comes back this way. So we join these two, this lower main line here, with the upper one, which is the Tarragini Cutoff, is basically a reverse loop. So uh, we'll show you the AR1 now, how I adjust it, and as we said in the classroom, and uh, I'll show you the fix we have to do. Right, here's our AR1. Here is our trim pot. So what you want to do is have that on the least current setting as possible. So when you get to your insulated joints, it needs the least amount of current to trip it. So it operates quickly and you have less uh, strain on the rest of the system. Also, if you have it set, as we said in the classroom, if you have it set to say trip at 3 amps, roughly, uh, and your circuit breaker for that section is set at 2, your AR1 is actually going to trip your circuit breaker, so you'll have all sorts of things going on and wondering if it's a short circuit and all that sort of thing, but actually what it is is your locomotive is shorting out the, uh, the block and because you have your AR1 set too high, your circuit breaker, which is probably more sensitive than one of these, because these, as I say, these are sort of old school now, 
uh, your circuit breaker will react quicker than the AR1 and shut the system down. So you want your, your auto reverse to set as low as possible trip current as possible. So, put our little screwdriver in there and turn it all the way anti-clockwise, which I've already done. And run a train through it, your longest train. Remember, make sure your train is within the whole reversing section, not hanging over at each end, because that will damage the unit. Because what happened, when that happens, as we said earlier, all your current from the whole layout will go through, well, the section will go through this little relay here, through the electronics, so we don't want that. So, put your heaviest train on with the most locos. If you've got resistive axles, put all them on. Load up the reversing section as much as you think that we'll have. Run the train through it. And if it starts clicking, just slowly wind it up in the clockwise direction until it stops clicking. And that's your minimum setting. That's what you want, trendsetters. Now, here's our insulated fish plates here. For the uh, one, obviously, for the turnout, but to insulate the frog at each end because the frog is wired up through the tortoise machine. And the other one uh, was for the auto reversing section, but now it's to stop uh, to insulate the power district B, which is this side, and power district A, which is this side. So what we want is we want both ends of the reversing section to be on the same power district. So it goes, the short can get back and get detected as quickly as possible. So what I've done is kept these two insulated fish plates here, but I've cut this section of track and made this little section of track here before the end of the, before the auto reverser, a short power district A. So what we have now is this section of track here is now power district A, which is the same as the other end of our Tarragindi cutoff, which is the auto reversing section. So when the train comes along, shorts these two tracks out now, it doesn't have to go through the tortoise machine, it doesn't have to go through District B circuit breaker and all that sort of thing, it can go straight through, straight onto District A, which is the other feed, the other end of the auto reversing section, and it'll switch as quickly as possible. And that has solved my problem. Now the other end is switched through a turnout, but uh, the turnout is on the same power district. So it appears that having it switching through the tortoise switch machine and going through another power district was enough to delay the short on this end and, it, and that was causing the problems. So uh, it's quite possible that the AR1 that I took off is not faulty. So we have another couple of reversing sections to put in so we'll put that on and see what happens. Hmm. Well, what have we learned today? Well we've learned that uh, I hate it when I'm right and maybe I shouldn't have uh, switched that reversing section through a water switch machine but I say probably nine times out of ten you won't have a problem but it's like the old Swiss cheese uh, scenario. If you get all the holes lined up in every little segment, then you'll have a problem. And uh, obviously we had enough holes lined up and that was the problem. But if you can, possibly try not to switch them through a tortoise. Try and end your reversing section on a section of track that goes straight back to the booster feeder, or the, or the same, sorry, the same power district as your auto reverser is uh, wide off and then you eliminate any more problems. Uh, try and get as least amount of contacts and switchable contacts in that circuit as you possibly can. Uh, also remember that your train lengths must be shorter than the reversing loop, otherwise you will damage them. Uh, that's, that's very, very important. And also, uh, yeah, have the trip current set as low as you possibly can and you'll get a lot more mileage out of them, I think. And as I might, might not be damaged, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, thank you for uh, riding along today. And we have a layout update coming uh, soon. Another one on an industrial section. Mm, sexy time. So uh, thank you all for watching. And we will see you very, very, very soon, as Benny Hill would say. Hooray for now.